I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. When I think about the new year, I think about people making New Year's resolutions. And there's nothing wrong with making a resolution. There's a lot of good resolutions to make. But a lot of people make resolutions as it relates to God. They promise God they're going to do better. They're going to try harder. They're going to read their Bible more. They're going to pray more. They're going to go to church more. They're, they're going to turn their lives around spiritually. So they'll make promises to God of, of how better they're going to do in, in their relationship with God and, and they're trying to earn God's acceptance and trying to get themselves right with God. And that reminds me of the prodigal. You know, the prodigal had left his home and had gone to the far country and had spent all of his money in wild living. He ended up in the pig pen, and while he was in the pig pen, he came to be in great need, and no one gave him anything. And he began to suffer, and he began to hurt. He had a lot of regrets, a lot of pain in his life. He was carrying a lot of shame and a lot of guilt. And he created a plan, uh, what he was going to do. And his plan included going back home and making promises to his father of how better of a son he was going to be and how worthless of a son that he was. But he was going to earn his way back into his father's heart. He was going to earn his way back into his father's home. And the way he was going to do this was he was going to tell his father just you know how bad he was. And uh, he, promised his, he was going to promise his father that he would work as a hired servant and in working as a hired servant... Uh, he could pay off his debt that he owed his father, and working as a hired servant, he could earn his father's respect back, and, and in doing that, earn his way back into his father's heart and into his father's home. So with this plan, he started on the way home. Now, the father had never stopped loving the son, and every day the father would wake up to see if maybe his son was going to come home that day. And then one day, the father did wake up. He looked down the long, dusty road, and he saw a, a person walking down the road uh, a long way off that resembled his son. And he began to realize that was his son. And so the father ran to his son, which tells us that no matter what condition we're in, no matter what pig pen of life we find ourselves in, that the father's love for us is never extinguished. The father's eager to share his love with us. And the father runs to the son and he reaches out to the son and embraces the son and has compassion on the son. What begins to happen in this embrace and this compassion and in this love is, is the son begins to experience grace. See, the son had made some resolutions, things he was going to do to impress his father, things he was going to do to make himself better and earn his way back into his father's heart and his father's home. But, but when the Son was embraced by grace, the, 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 by the Father, the Son dropped all the plans. The, the Son began to realize that you, you can't earn your way back into grace. That, that, that doesn't work. Grace is free. Grace gives hugs, and, and grace is compassionate to us in our, in our hurt, in our pain, in our suffering, in our shame. And, and if you notice in the story, the Father ran to meet the son. The father was so eager to share the love and the grace that he had in his heart with his son. And he wanted to heal the son of the shame that the son was carrying. He wanted to, to take the load of guilt off. And, and he runs to him and he, and he puts the best robe on him. He kills the fattened calf. And, and that's what grace does. Grace, grace in our worst gives us his best. That's what God does. Grace celebrates our return. The son couldn't earn his way back into the father's heart because you can't earn your way into grace. Uh, the, 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 the father always had the son in his heart. The son couldn't earn his way back into the father's home. You can't earn your way into grace. Grace is free. And so the son was always in the Father's heart, and then the Father brought the Son home. And, and this experience of grace that the Father lavished upon the Son is what totally changed the Son's life. See, the Father met the Son with compassion, not condemnation. The Father met the Son with love, not a lecture. The Father met the Son with forgiveness and not frustration. And the Father met the Son with anger, I'm, I'm sorry, with acceptance and not anger. 
totally surprising the son. The son wasn't expecting compassion. He was expecting condemnation. The son wasn't expecting love. He was expecting a lecture. The son wasn't expecting forgiveness. He was expecting frustration. And the son wasn't expecting acceptance. He was expecting anger. But he got the very opposite of what he was expecting and what he felt he deserved. See, he got grace. He received grace. And this grace totally revolutionized his life. And so my encouragement to you today is no matter where you find yourself, no matter what pig pen of life you find yourself in, this year, rather than making some resolutions to God of how you're going to do better and how you're going to improve and how you're going to start reading your Bible more and have a better prayer life and, 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 and improve your church attendance, this year allow God to give you His grace and refuse to make promises to God, um, New Year's uh, resolutions to God of how you're going to do better. Refuse to do that. Instead, receive His grace. Receive His compassion. Receive His love. Receive His forgiveness. Receive His acceptance. And know that you have a place in the Father's heart. You do not have to earn your way into your Heavenly Father's heart. You, you're a member of His family. You're a member of, of His home. You don't earn your way into His, His home. You're a dearly loved son. You're a dearly loved daughter of the Father. And He lavishes grace upon you. And let His grace this year heal you of your guilt. Let His grace heal you of your shame. Let His grace revolutionize your life this year. I hope you have a great 2018 enjoying, enjoying the grace of God.